Hello, I'm David Kerr, Director of Communications for the Diocese of Lansing here in Michigan. And the first week in November for this diocese and diocese all across the US is National Vocations Awareness Week. Uh, six days, as it happens, uh, in which to help young people and particularly to prayerfully fathom the call of God in their lives towards marriage, consecrated life or holy orders such as priesthood. At present, the Diocese of Lansing has 31 young men studying for the sacred priesthood. 30 of those are in the United States and one is in Rome. He's Peter Ludwig. He is our man in Rome. And I spoke to him a few moments ago and began by asking him to tell us his vocation story. I grew up in Diamonddale as the oldest of 11 kids, very strong Catholic family. Growing up, I was always going to Mass on Sunday. That was, that was just what we did as a family. But growing up in the Catholic Church didn't necessarily mean that I had chosen the Catholic faith for myself. And come high school, I found my heart very far away from God, even though I was still going to Mass every Sunday. Well, I found that this particular way of living, half in Catholicism, half out, was not fulfilling. I found that I was, very, I was very unhappy with the way my life was going. I didn't know what direction it was going. And so in high school, I had a bit of a, a dilemma before me. I didn't, I didn't exactly know how to pursue happiness. And there was a certain moment of grace where I recognized that I needed to change my life to become a happier person. And the Lord just took that and used that. I began to obey my parents. I began to serve other people. I found great joy in that. I also started living a lot more chastely. That was a big problem for me, big problem across the world right now, and I was no exception. Um, I really struggled with sins against chastity in high school, and that was impeding my happiness. It was impeding the purpose that God had for my life. And so in the context of a deeper conversion, the Lord began drawing me closer in prayer. I began to seriously pray, and I began to pray with the scriptures. And it was particularly in praying with the scriptures and in receiving the Eucharist in the Holy Mass that I began to really firmly experience a vocation to the priesthood. That was God saying in my heart, I want you to be a priest, a priest for me. That was a, a firm conviction that grew in my heart through prayer and through the sacraments. Um, that, that's, that got me here. And here for you is seminary, seminary in Rome. And if the will of God, the will of the bishop, and your will happen to uh, align one with the other, when are you due to be ordained to the diaconate? And when, please God, are you due to be ordained to the sacred priesthood? I'm due to be ordained on May 15th of 2021 to the diaconate and on in June of 2022 uh, to the priesthood. And if you ever allow yourself a moment to, to ponder or to, to, to spool forward to that moment of ordination to the sacred priesthood, what excites you most about the prospect of being a priest? Yeah. Priesthood is a sharing in Christ's love for the church. And what attracts me most about the priesthood is the totality of that sharing. One of the big reasons that priests are still celibate today after 2,000 years of that practice in the church is that a priest shares totally in Christ's love for the church. And I, I'm excited to give myself up with Jesus for the church. It's really the people of God that bring the best out of me, who really draw out of me a Christ-like love. And that's, that's what excites me about being a priest, is being able to share in Christ's love for his church. Now, uh, the Diocese of Lansing, thanks be to God, has uh, presently 31 vocations. We had a, 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 a huge influx of seminarians uh, last year, uh, as said, Deo Gratias. And uh, 30 of those 31 are in the United States. They're on this side of the Atlantic. They're in Minnesota or they're in Michigan. And we have one seminarian in Rome, and that's 
you. <laughs> How did you feel, Peter, when Bishop Boy said to you, um, you're not going to Detroit, you're going to Rome? Yeah, well, it was, it was very kind of, of he and Father, Father John Linden at the time. He, I was asked through Father John Linden, the vocations director, I was, I was given a choice to say yes or no, and that was a very, that was a very good thing. Uh, that I was able to to sort of decide and claim that for my own. I really didn't know what to say. They gave me time to to decide yes or no, and I didn't know what to say. I had no idea I would be asked to do this. I thought another seminarian would be asked was on the was definitely above me on the list of people who might get asked. As it turns out, we both ended up going, but. <laughs> when I was when I was asked, it was a it was a whole mix of. Of emotions, I really love home, and I didn't want to leave home. But at the same time, it was a great opportunity. And ultimately, what it came down to, I I went to prayer. I immediately took it to prayer. There's the the Adoration Chapel at IHM, right on the basically on the way back home for me from the cathedral to my house. It's right there. So I went right there. Said Jesus, <laughs> do you want this? Is this the right thing? And so I just felt in that particular moment of prayer that God was, was going to ask me to do this, that God was asking this of me to say yes. And then I said, all right, Lord, please open all the doors. Please, please let my parents be all right with this. Please help my siblings be all right with this because it means two years away from home without ever, without coming back to the United States. And God did that. He gave, he gave me a lot of peace coming out here to Rome, and then he, he gave my family a lot of peace. And that, those were tremendous blessings. Whenever God opens the doors to something that I believe I'm called to, that, that to me is the final sign that that's in fact where God wants me. And how's it been? Oh, it's been, it's been a wild two and a half years. No, no one could have imagined uh, Rome during this time, especially now with the pandemic. Um, I ended up not ending, uh, ended up not staying for two years total because we we were called home early because of the coronavirus pandemic and um, that that pandemic continues. It's really an interesting interesting time to be alive and especially to be in seminary when so much of uh, the the daily rigor and routine is absolutely disrupted <laughs> by something like a pandemic. Um, but I would say it's been a very blessed two and a half years. I've learned a lot about myself. I've definitely gotten the chance to grow and mature. There's a beautiful aspect of Rome in that it opens a person's mind because you're in contact with people from all over the world and people who think all sorts of different things, even people who are very Catholic and have dedicated their lives to the Catholic Church might think very, very differently than I think as a Catholic American. So it really, it really does give a seminary the chance to really open their mind to what's out there in the, in the Catholic theological world. And it gives a seminary a chance to visit tombs of saints all over Europe, it gives a seminary a chance to travel a lot of Europe and experience other cultures, other cities. Um, it really has been an experience of, of opening my mind and opening my heart to what the Lord wants. So where for you are the most special places in Rome, either the churches or whatever, will you most like to, to, to go, to be, to pray, to experience? The Basilicas of St. Peter and St. Paul are probably my favorite two churches in Rome. The Basilica of St. Peter, obviously with my namesake, being there is just a it's tremendous to have the bones of saint peter under that altar and saint john paul ii buried in that church and just the church structure itself is absolutely magnificent it's the it's the most beautiful magnificent church in the world no other church comes close in terms of size and really really it truly is a a masterpiece in terms of art and architecture that's in that building. But really, to be, to be near St. Peter and then at St. Paul's Basilica, to have the tomb of St. Paul and the chains of St. Paul 
you have two giants of our Catholic faith, two pillars of the church. And we're really, we're very close to St. Peter's Basilica and St. Paul's is a, a short distance away relative to what I would have in the United States. So 6,000 miles away, it's about a 45 minute walk. It really is, it is remarkable to be so close to those two giants. And how has it been with the language? I know that Bishop Boyer said he could have sent you to, to somewhere you could have studied in English, um, but he sent you to the Gregorian University, the Jesuit University, where you're studying in Italian. Um, I'd imagine for many people, conversational Italian is difficult enough, but you're actually doing academic, <laughs> a conversational Italian, but you're actually doing academic Italian. How's that? Yeah, it's, I'm not going to lie, it's tough, but um, it's definitely, it's something that can turn, turn into a real blessing in that the, the Gregorian has a huge number of students from all sorts of different countries. So I might, I might have never met someone from Latvia if I didn't know Italian. And it's, it's just one of those um, things that really did open up my world was learning Italian. I'm able to communicate with a, a much larger number of people because I have a language that's not my own, but everyone at that university speaks Italian. No matter what they spoke coming in, almost not very few of them actually spoke Italian before going to the Gregorian. But no matter what we spoke before, the language of the house is Italian. And there's sort of an interesting unity that can come from having everyone learn the same language and, uh, it's helped me engage the city, certainly, because I, I most likely would not have learned Italian very well if I had been able to study still in English. But having learned Italian well at this point, I'm grateful for it because I can, I can engage the people of Rome. I can speak to someone along the street. I can speak to the waiter at the restaurant. It just opens up more and more possibilities to be able to engage people in the culture that we're, uh, that we're here living in. And you're a seminarian in typical North American college, the NAC. Um, for those who don't know, what is the North the Pontifical North American? What and where is the Pontifical North American College? Yeah, the Pontifical North American College is a seminary of about 150 students from from across the United States, and actually, we have a number of Australians with us as well. Um, we're ranged from First theology through, uh, actually we have some, some priests who are still studying with us as well. They're called fifth year priests and they're, they're back to finish their license, a special degree at the pontifical universities. Um, yeah, that's, that's more or less, that's, that's who we are. What we do, we go to three different universities in Rome. That's a very interesting experience to have a house that goes to three different universities, the Santa Croce, which is the Opus Dei school, the Angelicum, which is the uh, Dominican school, and of course the Gregorian, which is the Jesuit school. So three, three great centers of thinking, all very different universities, all very different experiences. Uh, the, the Santa Croce and the Gregorian, you study in Italian, the uh, the Angelicum you study in English. Very interesting to have a, a house going to three different universities and then to sit down at a pranzo table and see how different <laughs> what you're learning is depending on, on which university you go to, all within the realm of Catholic theology. It's very, it's intriguing. Yeah. And as you point out, the significance of Rome is that the bones of Peter are there and the successor of Peter is there. Have you ever met the Pope? I have, in fact, met the Pope. That was, that was an incredible encounter. Yeah. Tell us about it. Yeah. Just Pope Francis's presence is very striking. Just that, that got me from the beginning. Just walking into a room with Pope Francis and being struck by not not just the fact that he's a powerful man or the head of the church, but the fact that he himself is the successor of Peter and that that office bears a certain striking presence to it. It was, it was very impressive. I was very impressed by, 
Um, I knew he was a holy father. He was very kind. And, but at the same time, his office is, is a tremendous one. He carries the office of Peter, of being the head of the church. And just walking into that presence, regardless of the, of the kindness, it's a little bit awe-inspiring to walk into the presence of a man like that, knowing that the entire Catholic Church, in fact, um, listens, listens to this guy, not because of some virtue of his own, but because he stands in the shoes of Peter. And what was the occasion? <laughs> Uh, the occasion was ad limina visits, so I actually was able to meet the the uh, the Pope twice within a matter of a couple weeks. I went once with the Archdiocese for the Military Services, uh, Archbishop Brolio, and the second time I went with uh, Bishop Boyer. So that was also mm-hmm. a very awesome opportunity to have uh, my own my own bishops introduce me to the the pontiff. Yeah. Final question, uh, Peter, uh, from uh, Sunday 1st November onwards, the church has entered into uh, Vocations Awareness Week. Uh, what would be your advice to any young person who is attempting to discern their vocation in life? Yeah, that's a very good question. There's no, there's no easy answer, but one thing I would suggest over and above all is prayer and then secondly courage courage is a three-letter word courage is saying yes in the face of fear y-e-s spells courage and to be able to pray means you're able to hear god that's a conversation with god prayer is a conversation with god and if god asks something difficult in the context of prayer Know that it's in a loving relationship. Know that God never asks something that he has not given the grace for you to accomplish. There's always the grace. And so saying yes often takes great courage. There can be great reasons for fear, and there's still great reasons for fear in any seminarian's heart. No seminarian in their right mind will tell you there's a moment where they're overwhelmed with with confidence that they have what it takes to be a priest. No one, no one, no human being has what it takes to be a priest of Jesus Christ. But when God calls you to that vocation, God gives grace, transforming grace. So trust that, trust that call and say, yes, that's, that's what I would say. Pray and have courage. Well, rest assured, Peter, that you have the prayers of all within the Diocese of Lansing as you continue through your studies in Rome. And on to ordination, please, God, and beyond. Um, If you could do us one last uh, favour, and just uh, in this uh, Vocations Awareness Week, if you could just lead us in a a, a prayer for all those who are trying to discern their vocation life, the call of God in their life, uh, over the next few days. Certainly. Certainly. Of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you for your great love. We thank you for your call in our lives. We thank you for your purpose for our lives. We know that your purpose is a good one. You know that we've, we know that you have made us not for destruction, but for love, for great things. We ask that we would hear your call clearly, hear your purpose in our lives clearly, and please grant us the courage to respond. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Peter Ludwig, Diocese of Lansing Seminarian at the Pontifical North American College in Rome. Thank you very much. Thank you, David.